Right, I'm going to go over some questions about magnetism and the motor effect. It's Edexcel unit SP12. But it'll basically cover magnetism and the motor effect from any physics syllabus. And these questions were originally taken from the triple higher paper 2. From the 2017, 18 and 19 exam papers. So you can see over the last three years, 24 marks worth of questions have been asked about this particular topic. Question 1. Figure 5 shows two magnetic poles facing each other. The magnetic field between the poles is uniform. On figure 5, draw the magnetic field lines between the two poles and show the direction of this magnetic field. Well, if it's uniform, that basically means that you need to draw straight lines equidistant apart, which means equal distance apart. And the only other thing that you need to do is make sure you draw at least three lines and show the direction of the magnetic field, which always goes from the North Pole into the South Pole. Three marks. Easy. Question two. Which of these is a magnetic material? Aluminium, carbon, cobalt or copper? Right, it's cobalt. So the magnetic materials are cobalt, nickel, iron and steel. Question 3. Figure 4 shows the magnetic field produced by a current in a long straight wire. Which row of the table is correct when the strength of the magnetic field is greatest? Well, the magnetic field is always greatest in the middle, especially when there's a strong current. So the distance from the wire wants to be small, so it's either A or B, and the current needs to be large. So it's B. You can tell how strong the magnetic field is by how close the lines are together. So you can see the lines here are close together and over here the lines are not as close together. Part 4. Describe how you could show that the Earth has a magnetic field. Two marks. Well, you would just use a compass and the compass will point north. And that's because it lines up with the Earth's magnetic field. And that proves that the Earth has a magnetic field. Question 5. Which of these materials would be the most suitable for making a temporary magnet? Copper? Well, that's not even magnetic. Iron? Yes. Plastic? That's not even magnetic. Steel? Yes, it is magnetic, but that'll be a permanent magnet. So the answer is iron. Iron is much softer than steel. That's why you can magnetise it and then demagnetise it. Steel is very hard. It becomes a permanent magnet. Question 6. A student sets up the apparatus shown in figure 9. When the current in the solenoid, now that's just a posh word for a coil of wire, is switched on, the solenoid attracts the iron nail. Describe how the student could use this apparatus to investigate how the size of the current in the solenoid affects the force of attraction between the solenoid and the iron nail. Right, so basically, if you put a current into that coil, the coil's going to become magnetic and it's going to attract the iron nail down. Now, the iron nail's connected to this pointer, which is on this scale. So, if we have some way to measure how much current's going in and we'll make it a small current at first and that'll just pull the iron nail down a little bit because a small current will create a small magnetic field. So that'll be a small force of attraction and that'll pull the spring down and the pointer down a little bit. And then if we repeat it with a bigger current and what we should see, hopefully, is the iron nail will get attracted with a bigger force 
The iron nail will come further down, stretching the spring and pulling the pointer down further. Right, I've said seven different things there. You'll definitely get four marks. I've probably just waffled on a little bit too much. Question seven. Figure 11 shows a copper wire between two magnetic poles. The current in the wire is in the direction shown by the arrow. The wire experiences a force due to the magnetic field. The direction of the force due to the magnetic field is... Right, this is Fleming's left-hand rule. It's called a motor rule because a motor makes things move. Right, I'll try to draw a hand. Right, that's your thumb. Do a big M. That's your first finger. And this is the second finger. The thumb shows you the movement. So in other words, it's going to indicate which way the wire is going to move. Some people say thumb, which shows the direction of the force, and the force will obviously make the movement happen. The first finger is the magnetic field, and the second finger shows you the direction of the current. Right, I've got a lovely video that explains all of this really well. I'll put a link at the top of the screen. Now, knuckles, no, 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 knuckles and north, Fingertips are south, and with the current, the finger shows the direction that the current flows. Right, so you've got to line your first finger up with the magnetic field from north to south. The second finger needs to go the direction that the current's flowing, which means that your thumb would show the direction that the wire will move. So the wire is going to move upwards. Probably it's best to watch my other video about that one because my drawing's rubbish. <laughs> Part two. The interaction between the magnetic fields produced by the magnet and the current in the wire produces forces on the magnet and the wire. Compare these two forces. Right, what they're basically seeing is because there's a current going through that wire, there'll be a magnetic field around the wire. That magnetic field around the wire is going to interact with the permanent magnetic field around this permanent magnet. The force on the wire by the magnet will be the same as the force by the magnet on the wire. They'll be equal in size but opposite in direction. Now because that magnet will be resting on a table and that magnet's a lot bigger than the wire, you'll only see the wire move. The wire will be moved upwards and the large magnet will be moved downwards, but you won't see the large magnet moving downwards. It's on the table. Part 3. Figure 12 shows a different wire inside a uniform magnetic field. The magnetic flux density of the magnetic field is 0.72 so that's B. The length of the wire inside the field is 30 millimetres. Right, let's convert that into metres by dividing by 1,000 or just by sticking a times 10 to the minus 3 on the end. The size of the force due to the magnetic field on the wire is 0 0.045 newtons. Calculate the size of the current. Right, 
So current, we don't know what that is. We know what B is. We know what F is. And we know what L, the length, is. Is there an equation connecting those things? Yes, there is. It says use the equation selected from the list at the back. It's F equals Bill. Magnetic field or magnetic flux times by the current times by the length. Let's rearrange it to get the current. If you don't know how to rearrange the equations, have a look at me video called Magic Triangle. I'll put the link at the top of the video now. Put the numbers in. Because this unit up here is in metres, which it always will be, that's the giveaway that you couldn't just leave the length in millimetres. And that equals 2.08. Right, sorry about this. I recorded all the answers, but unfortunately, my screen recording device failed. So I've got all the answers on here, and I'm just going to quickly go over them. Number eight. A student uses a plot and compass to investigate the magnetic field around a wire. Figure 10 shows the wire going straight through a card. Figure 10 shows the compass needle when there is no current in the wire. Which of these shows a possible direction of the compass needle when there is a current in the wire going from P to Q? Right, this is the right hand grip rule. So if you were to put your hand like that with your crazy sausage fingers, <laughs> your thumb shows the direction of the current and your fingers would show the direction of the magnetic field. No, 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 knuckles are north, fingertips are south. So if you were looking down on the top of your hand, the field would be going anti-clockwise. So put your thumb going up from P to Q, curl your fingers around, so the magnetic field, once there's a current in the wire, would be going anti-clockwise. So this compass is going to start pointing to the right. So the answer is A. Part 2. Describe how the student could develop the investigation to find the shape of the magnetic field produced by the current. Okie dokie. So what you want to do is place several compasses around the wire, then turn the current on through the wire, and each of the compasses will start a line up with the magnetic field. So if you were to just draw arrows, the way that all the compasses are pointing, and then you just want to connect those lines all together and that would show you the shape of the magnetic field and the direction. And this is how you write it down. Place multiple compasses all around the wire, turn on the current, trace the direction of the compass needles. They will show the shape of the magnetic field produced by the current. Connect all the arrows together to show the overall shape of the magnetic field. All these little dots show you another way you could do it. If you were to sprinkle iron filings all on the card and then turn the current on and give the card a gentle tap, all the little iron filings will line up in a circle. Now that would show you the shape, but it wouldn't show you the direction. So you're best to use compasses. You could just use one compass if you want. Put one compass there, turn the current on, trace which way the compass is pointing, then move the compass to each of these different points with the current still on and just do the same as before. Just trace which way the arrow is pointing, which way the needle is pointing and connect them all up. And finally, number nine. A student has a bar magnet, a piece of iron the same size as the magnet and some paper clips. Describe how the student could use these items to demonstrate temporary induced magnetism. If you induce something, it means you've made it happen. And temporary means it's not going to happen forever. What you want to do is get your little iron bar, put it next to the paper clip, try to pick the paper clip up with a piece of iron and nothing will happen. Then you want to touch the piece of iron with the magnet and try to pick up the paper clip. And what will happen is the paper clip will attract to the piece of iron due to induced magnetism. 
Then what you want to do is take the magnet off the piece of iron and that'll prove if the paper clip falls off, which it will, that'll prove that the induced magnetism was just temporary. So remove the magnet from the iron. The paper clip will no longer be attracted, proving the induced magnetism was only temporary. Okie dokie. So I hope these videos are helping you. They will increase your success and they will help you to get more marks in an exam. So I will be producing more videos on a regular basis. Keep watching them. Subscribe to my channel. Turn the bell notification on so you get notified when my next video is. Work hard, be nice and bye for now.